The year is now 2023 and having the ability to set my preferences to light mode or dark mode is almost a requirement of mine when determining if I'm going to use an application long term or not. Let's learn how we can add that to our Svelkit application with server side rendering and persistent state so we can keep the same theme every single time a user browses our website. With the use of a little bit of SvelteKit magic and Daisy UI, we'll be able to add all these different themes to our application. And the same logic will apply if you're not using Daisy UI, if you have your own custom themes defined, or if you're using another library of sorts. So let's learn how to make this happen. Okay, so to start out, I think it's a good idea to know how we actually can change a theme inside of our application. So it's obviously going to depend on your specific setup, but if you're following along using Daisy UI, this is how we do it. So we have this data dash theme equals is how we set the different themes. And if we scroll down here a bit, we can see that the default theme is light or dark for dark mode, but you can change the default theme if we want. So if I come into my application here, you can see I have just a demo page set up. I don't actually have any of the functionality baked in yet. And if I want to change to light mode right now, I have to manually go into my settings, change to light, and you'll see that the theme automatically applies. And that's using uh, the CSS prefers color. Right, but we want to actually be able to keep that persistent, right? So let's just say I have my Chrome or my Microsoft Edge browser in dark mode, but I always want this specific site to be in light mode, right? Right now, we don't really have a way to do that. So let's go ahead and start to add that functionality to our application. All right, so what we need to do is we need to come up with a way to tell our server what theme we want, right? And then a way for our server to persist that theme across, you know, multiple different requests throughout the life of that um, theme existing. Okay. And as you can see right now, I just have nothing going on here. I have a couple of list items, uh, within this drop down menu here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to use a form action to tell my server what theme I want to select. So within this UL here, and again, this doesn't matter where you put this in your application. This is just for this example. Um, we're going to set up a new form. We're going to remove the action and we're going to say method is post. And this form is going to wrap all of these list items here within this UL. Okay. Now what we're going to do to these buttons is we're actually going to say form action equals, and we're going to say slash question mark slash set theme and theme equals dark without those uh, quotes. Okay. And then I can do the same thing for this light button here and change this to light. So what this form action does, if you're not familiar, is it actually will send the same form or submit the same form to a different endpoint, right? With the same data. In this case, we're not actually passing any data. Really all of our data is here inside of the URL. So whatever we're trying to hit inside of these query strings, right? So we'll go ahead and save this now. And now we need to actually set up our form action. So we can come into our page.server here and I'll say uh, kit actions here to quickly add this. Let me add my type safety here. And I'm going to have an action called set theme. Remember we're inside of the layout here, which is why I prepended this with this slash here before the question mark slash, because you know, if we're on another page, we still want to be able to hit this action on our root page. Okay. So that's why I added that there. So set theme is going to be asynchronous and we're going to take in URL and cookies. And what we're going to do is we're going to say const theme equals URL dot search params dot get theme. And then we can console log theme right here just to, uh, to demonstrate what that would be. Okay. So now if I open up my console here and I come into the browser and I click on light, we're going to see that light gets console logged here. If I come in here and hit dark, you're going to see dark gets console logged. Okay. So that's kind of how we're able to access what theme the user is trying to set. So how do we actually persist that? And then how do we retrieve that information, update our stuff server side before the actual theme gets rendered and we have that weird flicker, right? We don't want that flicker at all. So what we can do is we can say if theme, and again, of course, you'd want to validate this against, you know, acceptable themes within your application. So you don't have people passing in whatever random uh, query parameters they want, but um, we're just going to go here and say if theme. So if theme is not null, we're going to say cookies.set color theme to theme. We'll say path of the root pass. So it's available on all the pages. And then we'll set the max age to a year. So we'll say 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. And we'll leave that alone for the time being. So now what we do, whenever we hit this button, we should have a theme to get set, right? Or we should have a cookie to get set um, within our browser. So if I click on dark here and I open up my browser's application here. Wow, this is blinding. Let me go back to dark mode here. We can see that we now have a color theme cookie with a value of dark. 
So if I change this to light, we can now see we have a color theme cookie with a value of light. Okay, so this can be very important for us moving forward. Um, and that's how we're gonna be able to server side render these themes, okay? All right, so this is what a default hooks.server.ts looks like. And this is what's gonna enable us to server side render the updated color themes and the correct color theme based on that user's cookie. All of that is gonna happen here. So this is what the default one looks like if you don't set anything. So if I didn't have this file at all, this is what it would look like, okay? And I have a video going over hooks in a little bit more detail on my page if you wanna look at that. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say let theme And we're set that equal to null, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get the new theme, right? So this would be the theme that the user's trying to set. So we'll say const new theme equals event.url.searchparams.get theme, right? And then again, remember, hooks run on every single request to the server. So it's pretty much gonna intercept that request that we made from our form action. And it's also gonna be able to get the theme, right? And then we can say const cookie theme equals event.cookies.get color theme. Now what this is, we're actually reaching into the cookies of our browser here, and I'm not sure what happened there, but let's open up our browser application. That's gonna grab this color theme cookie here, okay? So now we have a new theme and a cookie theme. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a check. We're gonna say if new theme, so if they have a new theme set, that means they wanna override their cookie theme Right, so that thing should take priority over the cookie theme, right? So we'll say theme equals new theme, else if cookie theme, so if cookie theme is true, and this will be string or undefined, right? And this will be also be string or null. So if these aren't set, you don't have to worry about them, you know, throwing an error at you. We could say theme equals cookie theme. So basically, if they don't have a new theme, we wanna use the cookie theme, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if theme, so if theme exists at all, we're gonna return await resolve event. And then what we're gonna do is it takes in an optional second parameter. And if we look at this Svelkit documentation here, we can see that we have access to transform page chunk, which applies custom transformations to HTML. And we can see that an example here of them replacing something with something else, right? So I'm sure you already guessed at this point what we're gonna be doing. So what we're gonna say is, we're gonna say transform page chunk. We're gonna take in HTML, right? Or destructure HTML. And we're gonna say HTML.replace data-theme equals this, which we're gonna have to set here in a second, with data-theme equals quotes, dollar sign, theme. Oh, I should not have these here. I shouldn't have these brackets here. Whoops. Okay. So what we're going to do is by default, we're going to set data dash theme equal to this empty string here. So instead of our app.html, we can come in here and we can say data dash theme equals this. And daisy y will still work just as expected, right? So if there's nothing there, if I now set my color theme to dark, whoops, let me um, clear the cookie out right now, right? We can see that it was actually working there for a second. So if I go to light, you're gonna see that gets changed back as normal. If I go back to dark and then I set my theme to light, we can see now that it's already working a bit. We now have the color theme set to light. If I go back to dark, we now have color theme set to dark. So this works great and all, but one thing that you'll notice is we're reloading the page and we have this kind of ugly URL up here every single time that we um, change themes, right? So what, what can we do? We can use progressive enhancement to make this a bit better. Okay, so we'll come into our layout.svelte and we're gonna define a submit function. So we'll say const submit update theme. It's gonna be a type uh, submit function. It's gonna take in an action. We're gonna destructure the action here and we'll say const theme equals action.searchparams.get theme. If theme, then we wanna say document.document element, so the HTML element, set attribute data-theme to theme. And then we'll come down here to our form and we'll say use enhance equals submit update theme. So now if I clear this query string out of the URL and I change themes, we can see that it works the exact same way. It just seems a bit more seamless, right? 
Uh, but this would still work for those users who, again, do not have uh, JavaScript running, so it, which is pretty cool. So it's still working server side. All this stuff is happening on the server. Okay, so the last question you might have is, all right, this is great, but what if we're trying to submit from a different page, right? Isn't it going to redirect the user to that page because the action is sent from a different page? And we can actually take care of that as well. Um, and it's actually not too, too difficult here. So what we can do is inside of our form action buttons here, we can import page first from app slash stores. And we can pass another search parameter and we could say and redirect to equals page dollar sign page dot URL dot path name. Do the same thing here. Let me just copy this down. So then inside of our page dot server inside of this action, we can also get the redirect to url.searchparams.get redirect to and the url.path name is going to have whatever the current page is whatever the path name is so we'll console log this just first just so you can see it and what i'll do is i'll create a new route here with a plus page.svelte and i'll just say h1 hello so now if i go to slash hello Again, since the layout, since that form is in the layout, right, we need a way to determine which page we're on. So we know which page to redirect back to. All right, so let's watch our console here and let's let's just um, set the theme. We can see that we get slash hello console logged. So inside of here, what we can do, we can take advantage of that. And under this if statement, we can say throw redirect 303 redirect to. Otherwise, we'll go to the root route. And this basically just says, hey, if, if redirect two is truthy, we're going to use redirect two. Otherwise, we're going to use uh, the root route. Okay. So if something gets passed that is not valid, we don't want to, you know, send the user somewhere crazy. All right. So now we should be able to test this from the hello page if we wanted to. Let's just see here. If I set the color theme to light, it should stay on this page here dark, light, dark, even without. Um, you know, JavaScript enabled here, which is pretty cool. All right, so I know the demo in the beginning of the video showed all those themes. So let me just wrap up by adding the rest of those themes here. I have them inside of an array. So what I'm gonna do is inside of my uh, layout.server, I'm just gonna create const themes equals this pretty long array of different themes. And then we can clean this up down here a bit by just saying each themes as theme. You can get rid of this bottom button here. And we can simply say, and theme equals theme. And then we'll also have theme here. So now we have a ton of, we should have a ton of different themes here. Let me, there we go. We have a ton of different themes here now, so we can switch to any of these different themes from any page in our application and it will work. So that is how you can add server side persisting themes to your Svelkit application. So if you found this video informative, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel. If you have any questions, you can join the Discord server and ask them in there or leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.